welcome everyone to our leaders and managers um, session of Montessori Musings. Today we have got a great pleasure of welcoming Molly Easton from Bartfield uh, Montessori Day Nursery. And we have invited her to come and share her experiences of setting up um, a daycare provision, um, Montessori daycare provision. Molly herself has got um, quite a strong um, background in early years. She became an apprentice at the age of 16 and has progressed through mainstream um, early years. So she was kind of EYF has educated initially, but found Montessori to be much better fit for her ethos and her values. And when the opportunity came to set up um, a daycare, she jumped on it. So today she is going to share with us um, her journey from September 2020 to May 2022. So welcome, Molly. Um, I just remembered I need to remind you that we are recording the session. The session will be very much a conversation between Molly and I, and there will be opportunities to ask questions at the end. And we will continue to uh, record the questions. So please be aware um, that the recording will be shared tomorrow if you ask questions. Um, and thank you again, Wendelin, for looking after us and making sure that we are technically sound uh, for the session. So welcome, Molly. And Hi. let's begin by um, perhaps um, you telling us why did you decide to adopt the Montessori approach and pedagogy for your nursery? Um, so a little bit of background, really. I, like Barbara said, was working at EYFS settings for a very long time. And I think as I progressed and uh, came up to be a manager, I kind of struggled to resonate a little bit with a lot of the director's beliefs and a lot of the teaching and practices that were occurring in the setting. Not that they were bad, but I just knew that they could be better. And um, so I put myself through university and studied my degree, which I passed and met some wonderful people. One of those people was Michelle Wisby, which some of you might know. Um, she kind of helped me in um, learning about Montessori really, and it kind of really opened my eyes into another way of teaching and a new philosophy that I hadn't really embarked on before, but immediately found it resonated a lot with myself individually in the practice that I was wanting to see in my EYFS setting and so I studied it more and looked into it more and tried to implement bits into um, the EYFS setting but soon found there was quite a few challenges to that mainly being with ratios I just felt that they needed to be less and lower to be able to deliver um, the practice successfully so that's when I started to embark on the journey of trying to find my own setting and open and really open with that Montessori philosophy. Um, it's been a real learning curve for me because I didn't have all of the knowledge and I still don't have all of the knowledge in regards to um, Montessori and opening a day nursery, running a day nursery. Um, but I have an absolutely amazing team that is so supportive that we all do it together. My key reasons for doing Montessori was again massively about the practices that can occur in settings but also it just it really hit with me that you know we need to empower these children and we need to give the children this independence and you know these opportunities to really learn for themselves and so many times when I look in my environment now everyone is so so busy the children are so engaged and um, they're busy they're they're independent and um, they're really accessing everything that they choose to whereas before it was very scheduled as such you know it was every child today is going to paint a picture of a daffodil because it's spring and I just that it wasn't me because not every child wanted to paint a daffodil and that's OK. And um, so there was lots of little things like that that I just felt, you know, really hit home in Montessori that I could implement here. The respect of the child, again, you know, hitting with that 
every child doing the daffodil picture and um, the respect and valuing that child that actually they don't want to do that but what they did want to do is go and see the daffodils in the garden with the magnifying glass and look at all of the bugs that was on that daffodil because they had a slightly different interest or actually not focus on daffodils at all maybe they came back to it a week later and all of those ring things really were just for me everything in Montessori is so focused around the children. We are here for the children and we are here to absolutely deliver the best practice that we can and teaching the resources are beautiful. Um, it's, yeah, everything is about the children. And I just love that about the philosophy of Montessori. And that really, really sits well with me. And that's how we deliver our practice here. I just love your enthusiasm <laughs> and um, yeah, I so, I'm so happy for the children that benefit from the provision that you offer. Um, what made you decide to offer daycare rather than um, um, school hour provision? What was the deciding factor? Um, so being completely honest, I've always worked in daycare. It's, I've not worked in a preschool. Uh, when I was studying, I had some um, placement in a school but for me I just found daycare for me it was something that I've always worked in I needed the hours that's something personally that I, I needed to do financially um, but also for me my reasons were I feel quite passionately that most children in my daycare spend close to 40 to 50 hours a week in my setting we are you know touching on their main care provider which is huge it's a massive responsibility and I just felt that you know we could give these children such a wonderful experience you know there there's so much that they can learn and do not just in that end path with us of preparing them for school but actually for life what we can do here is really support them and I feel a great deal of responsibility that you know we do have these children and these families and you know they choose to work and they choose to send their children to our daycare and you know they're therefore then spending this huge amount of time with us and we've got such a duty to deliver the best practice and experience for them and I just felt that Montessori really supports them in doing so and you know even myself as a staff member I know that I'm a better practitioner now having traveled this path and having worked with Montessori now I know that I'm a better teacher I am um, and I, I just feel a great deal of responsibility having such a huge amount of time with these little people um, you know from six months old children attend here and you know we've got children here for yeah good Monday to Friday eight till six sessions and it's, it's huge it's massive and they deserve the respect of having the best opportunities so many people that I see on the screen are so happy to hear your voices. It resonates <laughs> very strongly with their own commitment to deliver the best yeah. for children and families in their care. Uh, maybe it would be good to sing now for you to tell us a little bit about the structure and organization of your setting. You know, how big are you? How many staff you have? Things yeah. Like so we, we're quite a small day nursery, which again is my choice. I didn't want to be a big, big day nursery and I won't ever be. Um, I like to keep it nice and small. We take around 30 to 32 children per day. Um, we're all in one class together. There's no defined age groups. Um, we do have um, a bit of like a gate across our um, classroom where we usually have babies in one section and um, over two and a half in the other section, but we really mix um, as much as we can really. Um, we are set in the beautiful countryside. We are surrounded by farm. We have an absolutely huge outdoor space, which is beautiful and very well used. Um, the children have complete free access to the indoor or outdoor at all times. We've got huge big double doors that are always open. Um, we have 12 staff members here now. Um, I own and manage. I've got a lovely deputy manager, Holly, who's absolutely fantastic. And again, has her journey is quite similar to mine in that she's doing her degree um, and is also now doing her Montessori and practice qualification. And then I've got an absolutely amazing body of staff around me, which I mean, obviously makes to 
every success and they are absolutely wonderful teachers so we are small um but it's lovely <laughs> small yes 32 children right. 12, 12 staff which in itself immediately um, gives you um, an understanding why um, early years provision is so expensive to run because mm -hmm. you deliver the best for the children you actually need to have uh, quality staff and you need to have many pairs of hands it doesn't always need to be somebody who is qualified by somebody who has the empathy for the children and who is able to support them. So when you started um, and through the last um, 18 months, how have you kind of worked with the staff? Were they qualified? How have you encouraged them to qualify? Tell us a little bit about the kind of the dynamics yeah. of your leadership and um, team. So the very scary times of uh, January 2021, when we opened our doors with 10 children on the list and three members of staff, it was <laughs> huge. Um, but we started, um, I mean, myself, yes, I have my degree, but not specialised in Montessori at all. So really no training. Um, I had um, two other staff members start with me at the time as well, who again, both were um cash level three early years educators but again no um Montessori training and then I had one staff member that came with me that started and she was Montessori trained and had worked in a Montessori preschool and um, this was her first day nursery um, and we all combined our skills and knowledge together I think well I hope that my ethos for Bardfield was quite powerful and I was quite clear in what I wanted to achieve at the nursery from the get-go which you know a lot of it did reside with um, the Montessori philosophy um, but yeah we we weren't qualified to start with um, 15 months later we are now and we've done our training and um, some of us have done full level threes and some of us have done Montessori and practice qualifications which is really obviously I mean, made, made it even better. Um, but it just really helped having that core. We had one or two, we've got another staff member that I employed eventually and um, that also has a Montessori qualification, but all in all out of 12 staff, um, well, actually Molly came as well. So three of them were Montessori trained and the rest of us as a team weren't, um, are now and we've all progressed together. But we just heavily relied on their skills um, as Montessori practitioners to teach us um, more the equipment um, and the philosophy and all the things behind it. But I think our core as staff members, all of us have that, you know, that love that you know we we all want to do this for the children and that was clear from the get-go and I remember just always saying to everyone right before you do anything for the child just sit back a minute count to 10 and then you know and then if that child still needs you or if you feel like you could still add then yeah great but just just count to 10 please and quite quickly we adopted that and slowly and doing little things like that we realized actually that that these children are amazing they can do so much for themselves and I think little steps like that just really built on the children's independence and then staff standing back and learning to observe them. Um, being the fact that many of us were EYFS trained, you know, not all, but unfortunately, most of our experience was high ratios and busy, busy day nursery settings. And, you know, it almost got a little bit like um, a, a wheel of, oh, we feed them, change the nappy, put them to bed and repeat that cycle. And we wanted to really come away from that. And I, I think that count into 10 just stayed in our heads a little bit just stop don't do anything and just let them try and quite quickly it you know the philosophy started to be adopted did you find a significant difference to the way how you have worked when you suddenly found yourself working with a team where everybody had some training or received a qualification did it make a difference um <laughs> I wouldn't say not drastically, no. Now, 
more that the staff have the Montessori training and experience, yes. But previously, I, you know, aside from Montessori, their level three qualifications compared to, you know, someone that's got no training at all, which, you know, two of my staff members are sticking right in my head now. No, no. I, I think my my what I look for when I interview staff is I really do go on a bit of a cut and a gut feeling and it it's not that I look at their qualification actually because all of those things we can change and we can support and we can help and actually I quite want to employ someone that is adaptable because I know what we're doing is absolutely fantastic and I want you to be moldable into doing that so it's not necessarily a qualification that I would say is is so so important I think it's just that core I think it's that love of what you're doing that you know that feeling that you really want to give these children the best opportunity and are you quite explicit about your values of um, um, the kind of key values of Montessori practice of giving children independence um, giving children freedom allowing them to develop um, and choose quite spontaneously trusting the child's capacity to learn yeah absolutely I all of those things are are from the core we had um, a young girl trial today for an apprenticeship position and quite quickly the staff report to me that she came in and um, wanted to do something for one of the children and our babies and the staff just said or just just wait a minute because they can actually do that for themselves just watch and she was amazed that actually this one-year-old is pouring from a glass jug into an open top cup and is having a drink for themselves and she said, just stay back and you know just respect that actually give that child the opportunity to do those things and let them show you and actually what's the worst that could happen some water on the floor maybe or you know yes possibly a smash jug but we're all there we've got ratios to deal with those things and you know things happen, accidents happen. And, you know, a huge thing building upon that is transitions. Transition really sticks at the heart for me. I think working in a big EYFS nursery, children seem to transition classrooms every time they had a birthday and their key worker would change. And, you know, all of these things would happen. So it, massive transitions for this child. And here we don't have that. They're all in a class together. It's so beautiful the way that, the babies just you know they grow and they develop and you start seeing these changes at two really that you notice you know they need some more challenge now or you know actually they're teaching the babies they're they're taking on that role of the teacher and they're doing all of those things that we know is absolutely amazing and again is part of you know this wonderful philosophy and you start to notice it so we open the gate and they have lots of opportunities to explore their classroom but everything's on their own accord you know it's their decision no child is forced to come into preschool it it, it, it's all their choice and we have no upset we have no tears the parents love it because you know there's not this massive thing that's happened to them either this is a whole nursery and they know the whole team and it just flows so nicely ah wonderful I just want to have a peep go and have a visit (laughs) do yes come and have a look um what were the biggest challenges of your when you started to you know when you opened in the first year from January 21 to January 22 what were your biggest challenges um I mean I think every challenge in nurseries and unfortunately the education sector is recruitment it is difficult to recruit it still is Um, it's hard to get those practitioners you know that have that feeling that we all do and you know work really hard to make sure the children have lots of lovely experiences I think that's hard and I I have had a few staff that have come and actually haven't ended up retaining their employment whether it be their choice or mine but you know I I am quite picky in the sense that I want them to, you know, I I want them to do this and be really passionate about um, the way that children can learn here and, you know, have um, a love for the Montessori and, you know, are, are willing to implement that and learn those things. And it's not for everyone. I think a lot of staff that have come from EYFS, um, are so set in their ways of what they've been doing and you know actually don't know anything different and then to have this kind of 
change um, to going from, you know, having a planning sheet where every activity is planned for for the day and then actually me saying oh we don't do planning here no we don't have planning we observe the children and do what the children are interested in and we we have to be really responsive to their needs and you know their interests and actually a lot of staff members have struggled with that relating to that because I think their days have been so structured they don't necessarily know how to step back they're itching to do it for them so that flexibility is really um, an essential part of being um, an effective um, early years practitioner as well as Montessorian if we really want the children, the learning to be led by the children yeah. themselves and give them the opportunities to engage with the environment. Um, what would you, what do you love best about the environment in which you work that you have created for the children? What is your favorite area? Oh. That's a hard question. <laughs> I just love it all. It's so beautiful. I, I think I've I've never I've there's always been something where I've been looking and I've not quite found it. And it may sound a bit corny and a bit cringy, but this is this is it. This is this is the real thing. You know, when you walk into Bardfield, the children are so content, they're so happy, you know it's calm it's uh, you know the children are super confident and they're just busy and you know quite a lot of the time I like to spend time in the classrooms just observing whether my staff know that or not I'm always observing and you know I just love seeing lots of pockets of things going on and super random anything going on but all different and the children are so so engaged um with all that they're doing um I think as a core I mean when I first started I think I really liked um practical life activities of everyday living because it did I saw so quickly wow these children are really capable you know pouring from one into two into three and then with wet actually that that's huge two years old you know to be able to have that control is amazing and you know there's sponges on the tray as well and actually they clean their they clean their own water up when they've um, had a spill they're correcting themselves wow okay this is this is great this is lovely and then it gets more challenging and actually you know children in our preschool at the moment are literally I've got staff member Rochelle that is amazing at practical life and the children are squeezing their own oranges and then making orange juice and having a tea party with the orange juice and sharing it with their friends in you know china cups life-size china cups with a saucer and then when they're finished they go and wash it up and put it back on the shelf again for the next child to use and i just think wow but you know it's so it's it's lovely um at the moment, I really like KUW. I think preschool have got some amazing things going on in KUW at the moment. We've got a new um, bug activity that's going on. It's collected. It's like, um, you know, the magazines that you subscribe to and then they send a bug through. So the bugs are sent through and the children are just absolutely amazed with these bugs, you know, and it, it's not EY first standard practice. This is a bumblebee and this is a worm. This, this is a scorpion. And do you know what a scorpion does? And can you see that its tail is curling over? And, oh my goodness, what's that? You know, it, it's so passionate and it's I, I can even feel it now and you're all smiling at me because I look like <laughs> I'm, I'm all doing this. And you know exactly what I mean. And it just feels good, right? It, feel, it feels lovely to be able to give these children this, this knowledge that they're two and they're learning this and they're absorbing it. And they know all of these things and then they take this knowledge and apply it. And it's amazing. It's it, great. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing. I uh, took my two and a half year old to the allotment I take her there every every week just I could say I'm going to check what is growing and yesterday she said look granny the potatoes are much bigger which I thought amazing she noticed it yeah. she already recognized them you mm. know I mean what a gift um to give the children um for their future life it's really lovely but to go back to your staff um so um it's, many of them have not had training you have made sure that they do have a training so do you factor in the idea of training 
um, into the uh, contract that you sign, that they sign with you, or how do you encourage people to do this training? And what is your plan for professional development? Um, I think I'm lucky in the sense that actually the staff have almost made that decision for themselves. Um, they've seen that actually I want to know how to present Pink Tower and I want to know how to present the binomial cube because those are things, uh, this knowledge I need to deliver um, the best of the children. So I think a lot of them, it's, you know, when I've spoken to them on supervisions and things like that, they've recognised that actually in themselves, they would like to become a more knowledgeable practitioner to be able to deliver um, the equipment mainly to the children. You know, it's quite difficult when, you know, these children are coming up to you and you're saying, what's this? And you're not quite sure, you know, you need to be confident. And yes, you can say, oh, I'm not actually quite sure. I'm just going to look at that. And, you know, I, I will support you. And those things do happen and that's okay. Um, and the children are super patient with that and it will happen. Um, but they have taken on that responsibility themselves of, you know, I want to do more, I want to learn. So that's been absolutely amazing. I would say for new staff members, again, I literally had someone in today trialing, you know, I make it clear that actually Mont story is us and you know to to be able to work here not initially but in at some point you know potentially after six months you're going to need to look into um Montessori training it's something that we would like you to do um we deliver it here um with a local um it's with Michelle Wisby so with a local company we do training alongside her and it's face-to-face -face and online and the face-to-face -face is you know absolutely amazing um but this, the staff want to do it. And, you know, my way of getting them to do it is that we pay for it. The, the nursery pays for that training. And, um, you know, it's expensive, but it's worth every single penny. And, you know, that's our investment into our staff that, you know, we offer that opportunity for them to learn more. And you probably have not had this um, experiences yet, but um, I have had heard many um, nursery owners say, well, you know, I have trained them and then they left me. Um, how do you feel about that? <sighs> I mean, it's hard and that is that is a risk. Absolutely, it's a risk. And I haven't no had it as of yet. However, you know, I think it's one of them things. Hopefully I provide a really, really lovely working environment so that they don't want to leave. <laughs> but of course, I can't, I, I can't force my staff to stay. And, you know, I, I hope that after having that training and, you know, my commitment to them, that they would retain their commitment to me. But it's unfortunately, it's one of those things. You know, I, I can't run a Montessori provision with the constant risk of, oh, they might leave, so I don't train anyone. Unfortunately, it's a factor that I have to consider. Sadly, it probably will happen, but there's not really much I can do. But also, um, if the quality, if the training was of good quality, it has, it remains part of that person's practice. Yeah. Therefore, you are giving more children opportunities. So yes, your setting has lost, but if you are really committed to children, other children will potentially benefit, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, most definitely. And also, it's kind of an example of your leadership of the setting where you believe that the training is important and therefore you are prepared to um, pay for it or contribute towards it. It is part and parcel of the employment contract that we should we should acknowledge that our staff have got aspirations and that they would like to learn more and make it possible for them in some way. Would mm -hmm. you say? Yeah. yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I know that you have um, had an offset um, and that uh, you, you know, it is so many people are wondering how the new Ofsted um, regime works. And I just wondered if you would like to share some of that experience with everybody. Uh, of course I would. <laughs> we are outstanding. So absolutely amazing. We uh, received our outstanding judgment in March. So what's that, two, month, two months ago? We're now May, aren't we? Yeah, so March we had our first inspection, um, which I mean, 
we got outstanding so of course it was an absolutely wonderful experience for us stressful nevertheless because it's tiring and it's a very long day for us all and um, but it was a really positive experience for us and it's quite lovely because I'll share with you our, our um, report and obviously you can go on the Offset website and find um, Bardfield Montessori's um, report but that one of our comments in the report is how seamlessly um, the staff, um, the managers link the EYFS and the Montessori curriculum into practice. And um, I, yeah, so that, that for me was, I mean, huge because, you know, that's the comment that we all want. But do you know what? I was just so happy with what she saw of the nursery. And I don't think I've ever met quite an inspector that I felt that she was so overwhelmed by it. You know, my deputy and I, we spoke afterwards and we said, oh, was she gonna cry? Was she, was she tearful when she was given that feedback? Um, and it was, it was a really emotional time. And um, she, she was absolutely amazed. I, I mean, massively with our babies, you know, we've got young babies you know 10 month old nine month old babies that are drinking from open top cups and she she couldn't believe it she honestly she was taking a step back and you they've got no lid yeah <laughs> yeah they don't they don't they don't need to and you know th these these small 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 children are housing glass they're housing china they're they're spooning they're doing all of these things in practical life that i truly believe she hadn't seen before and then not only did she see it you know during their um learning cycle but also she saw it then implemented again at lunchtime and she observed the babies at lunchtime and saw that actually all these skills that they've learned they're now using at lunchtime and so successfully as well and it, it it was an absolutely lovely day I think there was lots of things that she was um well I felt she she was really passionate about she really loved the fact that you know she was amazed um that the children you know there's a water dispenser in babies uh, in preschool with glass cups by it and you know Typically, EYFS settings, every child had a water bottle with, you know, their picture and their name or something on their water bottle and they access this through the day, whereas our children don't have that. They have glass cups and they have a glass water dispenser that does need refilling during the day as well, which actually the whole time she was here during her you know, eight hour inspection, the children were able to manage that completely independently. I'm thirsty, I recognize that and I need a drink. So they could access that water and fulfill that need for themselves. And I think it was that in so many things that, you know, she really enjoyed observing um, snack. It was lovely, our snack. I try to do something different each week with snack where I buy a piece of fruit or a vegetable or, or anything that, you know, actually quite a lot of children wouldn't probably experience so it just so happens the time offset we're here in we had pomegranate that week and she was looking thinking oh they can eat that you know pomegranate there's this purple spillage over the table and she's thinking oh pomegranate but she did she watched and she observes and you know this new language that the children had about pomegranate and they were sharing and they all had um, their own cutters and a chopping board that they were all there themselves cutting this pomegranate and you know yes an adult was there supervising but the adult didn't dictate how to cut this pomegranate and you know what equipment they should use and all of those things it was completely that the group of children's choice um and it, it it's just lovely it's you know it's beautiful to observe these children and then they put it in their bowl and you know they play the role of the teacher and say that's pomegranate would you like to try some and they share it into everyone's bowls and you know not quite sure on the pomegranate but they're all trying and they're exploring it and it, it's lots of lovely things like that that you know i i think you know she just really enjoyed seeing and it's all of those things that really you look at children and it, their everyday life they are with those adults could not have been in that classroom at that point the children are able to completely access their environment for themselves and 
achieve completely wonderful things independently. They they didn't actually need us the day of offset or many other days, to be honest. And um, they are independent. And she just really enjoyed seeing that. You know, she was really amazed by the staff's teaching skills. They were really confident in um well their teaching, their practices. She made a comment to me, which I, I, I thought was quite interesting. There was a two-year-old um, in the knowledge and understanding of the world area completing a puzzle. And she had attempted to complete this puzzle two or three more times and couldn't quite make the pieces fit. Um, and she was completing it independently at the table. And the offset inspector went and got one of my staff members and said, you know, that child there needs help. They can't do that puzzle. So one of my staff members said, it's, it's OK, I'm aware, I've, I've, I've seen her, I know she's there, she's trying, that, you know, she's got the opportunity to try and uh, I know when she needs me. And the child completed it, they were fine, they, you know, they completed the puzzle and it was a bit, you know, the, <laughs> I just think, <laughs> you know, it, it, give, just give them a bit of time and they're fine. And she was really overwhelmed with that, that the staff were so in tune and, you know, of the staff's abilities and just stepping back and giving that, them that time to really explore their environment and learn for themselves. I have read the Ofsted report and mm. I was so delighted to see so many practical examples showing uh, what your setting has to offer to the children. It was it couldn't have been any other setting. It was a specific, specifically written about your setting. When in the past I have read so many Ofsted reports which have which could be very generic and Ofsted had kind of generic phrases that they used to describe setting. So yes, I think there is an opportunity for uh, in the new Ofsted inspections to demonstrate uh, what Montessori has to offer to children. And um, with a little bit of sensitivity from the Ofsted inspector, it should be possible to really also um, reflect um, your offerings to um, in the report, so there are there is a hope in the changed um, inspection. I hope I I don't know maybe others have got some other experiences, but let's see what will come. Um, I, I there are just two more questions I want to yeah. ask you. One of them is, what would you say is the biggest bonus of working in a Montessori environment? for you as a person, you know, it takes a lot of effort to make it work as you do. So what is the bonus? No, I, I mean, for me, definitely is when I walk into my setting and I do have the lovely flexibility of normally being the first one in, but last one out, but it, it's nice that I can go in and every time I walk into my setting, it's beautiful it's lovely there's never a time that I walk into my setting I think oh god you know so and so is not doing that again or you know oh that child's crying and that child's not very happy and you know they're not content and oh you know our practice could be better in that let's have a supervision and you know discuss all of those things I don't I don't I, it's truly beautiful and I know I'm absolutely biased in saying that but it is just so lovely to walk in and you know see these children at work that they're, they're so busy and the staff as well I, you know it makes me happy that when I walk into my nursery I know that this is a happy place I know that staff feel happy and I know the children feel happy and you know so often we talk about reflecting on our practice here and we talk as a team you know everyone has the opportunity to say what's working really well what isn't and they be heard as much as what I want to be heard and so many times we reflect and quite often with my deputy and it, it makes me smile because I you know it, it's lovely what we do you know and we recognize that actually this is this is a really unique place here that you know what we do is really about the children and you know when you walk into my nursery it, it I'm proud because I know everyone that comes here they, it's so calm so quiet are there any children here wow look at what they're doing look at oh, you've got that resource and, you know, all of those things and those really positive comments are just, that. that's what makes me happy. It, you know, it, it's the fact that these children have 
wonderful opportunities and they're happy you know there's not tears there's not I don't want to come to nursery and you know we have to prize a child off their mum that they're, they're run straight they're running into nursery and they're not even looking back and I think that's how it should be for them and it was achieved during lockdown yes I, I know mad woman really opening up a day nursery never had one before never done Montessori and in a lockdown yeah good lovely I I love your enthusiasm and your passion for your work uh, what are your plans for the future um <laughs> I don't really I'm really enjoying now I'm enjoying now and you know I'm enjoying everything that Bardfield um, is um, we are planning a little extension at the moment to Bardfield um, to make a bit more of a larger classroom um, but that that will be all our our nursery here is on two floors and um, downstairs is our classroom and the upstairs is my office and staff room and then we've got a bit of a sleep room and ever since I opened Bardfield I just felt that the sleep room I, I don't know it there's something about it that I don't quite like <laughs> um, and I think a lot of it is about the sleep and I think just structurally as a nursery it's quite difficult um with the children sleeping because of course we don't have structured sleep times children sleep whenever they need to sleep and when they're tired um, and here it feels like we could be better at that because the sleep room is upstairs it does feel at times that this can be more structured because actually a staff member has to take this child up to sleep and our classroom isn't that big enough to have um like day beds and things like that in the classroom it's quite, quite a small baby room so we're having a bit of an extension done downstairs so that actually we can have more of a snug so that children can be independent in that um transition during their day of sleep so that they can also have you know lots of access to soft furnishings and things that they can decide when they want to sleep and of course some of them encourage sometimes you do want to sleep don't you? <laughs> we we can see you're a bit tired <laughs> um but yeah I think that that would be lovely for Bardfield um the upstairs just isn't working that well with sleep um fine but it just could be better um so that yeah Yes, well, we wish you every success. Thank, Thank you very much for sharing your journey. Um, I think lucky children, lucky team, and huge level of commitment to the quality that you provide from yourself. Uh, I wondered if people have questions or would like to make comments. You can put up your hand and ask a question or put it in the chat. What would you, uh, what would you like to do, everybody? Or are there any questions or are you so overwhelmed by the success you think oh i need to work harder <laughs> or if only i could do this or maybe you could tell us you, so, can. <laughs> you, do own, it. <laughs> you own your provision you own the building in which you or no, are you we re uh, it's rented it's a rented um it's like a um barn building it's rented um yeah but it is you are you you don't have to pack away it's no it's here all the time yeah and that makes a huge difference to the mm -hmm. quality of the provision too that's a bonus for you not mm -hmm. everybody who is working with us on the screen has got that um, opportunity yeah thank you wendy says that she loves your enthusiasm and <laughs> keep up the good work yes we feel that Thanks, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> I, I saw two hands. I think I saw Gulbayas. Did you? You had your hand up first, and then uh, Sarah popped her hand up after. So maybe we can take them in order. Gulbayas, if you want to go first, unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good. Hi uh actually i am in turkey i was in usa over 25 years <clears throat> i moved to turkey uh, about six years ago seven years ago almost and i opened uh the school in turkey 
But uh, my experience is a little bit uh, different than U.S. NATO, and I wasn't expecting that. Actually, I have been away from home so long—25 years. <clears throat> the educational system is in Turkey is totally different. Um, when you give an example, such as like parenting style is different. Children are coming uh, to school. Um, uh, they are very dependent on their parents. They, um, the parenting style is actually, they expect everything parents to do it, you know, tying the shoes, uh, dressing them up. And also the teacher training in Turkey, in typical uh, teacher training in the universities. Also, uh, the teachers are supposed to do everything for the children. So when the parents come to school, you know, they if the teacher, uh, allow students to, you know, have help themselves, like mm, preparing their own uh, snack or preparing juices or cleaning after they are done with their snack. Parents get upset about it because they feel like, okay, we are paying, teacher has to do it. So, you know, yeah. And I appreciate that the conditions are very different. However, yeah. I have also witnessed that it is possible for Montessori provision to work really quite well in Turkey. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I have a, a, a yeah. Did, uh, I mean, course in Istanbul, but it of course depends very much on how you promote your setting and how you help parents understand what it yeah. is you are giving. To yeah, children. yeah. Shows, Actually. Actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this is the first year of my experience, you know, after I communicate with the parents more and explain them what is Montessori about it, what are we offering, and also the teacher that I hired, you know, and I helped them understand what is the concept of it and what is the method. So after that, it is the uh, uh, conflict actually, uh, ease, you know, it took for a year to settle down. And later on, parents understand how valuable Montessori method is, how independent their children at home and outside, they are really appreciated the method. I mean, but uh, for example, for the material part, uh, traditional, um, uh, I, I don't want to call daycare, but preschool, they do have a lot of toys and colorful classroom and, you know, beautiful. Uh, it sounds very, it looks very attractive, but when they walk into the Montessori classroom, even though we're educated parents, when they come in for a tour, they say, where are the toys? Mm -hmm. What is our children will do all days, you know? They, even though when you explain, they don't like it in the beginning, but you know, when you uh, explain the parents, uh, or if there are some parents, they really do research before they come to our school, and then they really understand the value of the method. So, and uh, for the teachers. Sorry, I, 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 sorry Gulbayas, I, I am conscious that we also had another question. So okay. if, if you right. don't mind. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 that's really, it, it's okay. important Thank that you. we understand so the experiences I... from different countries. Um, okay. But I, I might move on to Sarah now. Did you okay. have a question, Sarah? Thank you. Thank you, Gulbayas. Yeah, thank you. Um, I didn't really have a question. I just wanted to really thank Molly because having, um, run a school for a long time and, and feeling exactly how you feel and talking about staff I think it's um, I don't think it matters as you said whether someone is EYFS trained or Montessori trained you know as you said you get a gut feeling if someone is going to do it or not do it and I think my best member of staff came to us as an apprentice and she's now a deputy and I just you know, it's just the best thing that ever happened, really, to have start people who you can rely on. But I think your example of uh, is really inspiring. And uh, having failed our last inspection, well, not that I got good, it really makes it right. We, we need to look at things completely as a whole and see what, what areas as you have that we can improve on. So I'd really just like to thank you and thank you for your enthusiasm and honesty. Oh, so that's all I want to say, really, but thank you. <laughs> Our day has a question. Thanks, Sarah. Molly, thank you so much for your wonderful inspiration. 
and putting a huge smile on all of our faces. And I would love to come and see your school if I may. <laughs> Absolutely, everyone is welcome. Not a problem at all. I'm more than happy for my details to be shared. And of course you can find us online anyway, Bardville Montessori. So do get in contact if anyone would like to speak further outside of this or would like to visit or virtually if anyone's too far away, I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can. And, you know, share my experience with a smile yeah. <laughs> well, Thank so you. Kind. Molly if it's all right so what we always do is we follow up um you know the uh, the day after the webinar uh, where we share the recording if it's all right with you I'll also share the link to the Ofsted report so that people yeah. can see what's been written and I will make sure that I um include your nursery's name uh, and a link to your website if, if mm -hmm. that works for you of course yeah absolutely more than okay that would be lovely. Thank you, Wendelin. Any other comments, observations? Diana has a question. Oh. Yes, sorry, Diana. Yes. Just to, again, to, like Shade said, really, just to thank Molly so much and your comments and, and, and your story about your school really resonated with me because um, I think, you know, I'm from the Montessori Society, AMI UK, and we have just for the last couple of years been running a coaching course. And the person running the course, she's an American, and she, her background is from Montessori in the public sector in America. And just to quickly condense it, she says what happens is that literally the, the school closes in June as a regular mainstream traditional school, and then reopens again in August as a Montessori school. Now, if you can imagine, you've got, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know how big those schools are, but let's say you've got at least 100 teachers, some a Montessori train, they take on a few, but the majority are not. And, you know, immediately you think, well, how, how is that possible? How is that possible? But you've just explained how it's possible. You start with the fundamentals, you know, you mentioned practical life, which is the thing that people very often want to overlook. They want to get straight onto the pink tower and the number rods and the, you know, and they think that's the teaching part of it. But unless you prepare the children to believe that they can do it, unless you build up that agency in the children and in the teachers as well you don't get to that part the pink, you know the pink tower and and what and you just you just very well explain that so you know our coaching course is it offers a lot of tools with which staff can gather around the tools to work out how they are going to get to those pieces how do we convey um, agency to the children how do we convey to the parents that the children need to be, in, you know, to act independently. And it's a process as well. So thank you very much and congratulations on your Ofsted. I'm sure you deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Diana, for mentioning the course. Those of you who follow our blog and our Sunday Inspirations will know that we have promoted the course and another one will be run next January. I would wholeheartedly recommend it to those of you who want to reinvigorate your leadership style and have some little tools um, to help you along the way. There's lots of useful resources there and opportunity to really reflect on how you do things and why you do them. Any other questions? Can you see any other questions in the boxes, Wendelin? I can't, I can't. There are extremely positive comments for you, Molly, which I, I, I imagine you might be reading. Um, and um, also, uh, Diana, um, uh, appreciation for your idea of agency before, before materials. Um, <laughs> so, um, yes, thank you all. There's, um, sorry, there was just one question at the end there about what Montessori training do you recommend? I've just seen in the um, text. Uh, I personally, I think you've shared it on your Montessori Musings page before. We use um, Michelle Wisby, who is, you know, works alongside us here um, to um, complete training. So she does um, a level three, a level four, um, and she also does um, a MIP, which is Montessori in practice. And um, so if you've already got a, a full and relevant qualification, you can almost do a little bit of a top up, I suppose, for Montessori in practice so that you can learn the philosophy first and then the materials, which a few of us do. So we have personally done that. And, you know, it, it's been wonderful. The results that we've got from that are um, absolutely amazing. But yeah, I just wanted to touch on Diana quickly there. 
thank you that was nice you put it into exactly what I was almost trying to say about that that core is there and there was a lot of talk about parents and getting parents on board but hopefully lots of the comments are about how enthusiastic I am and <laughs> I think that's me so I think a little bit they buy into it a little bit <laughs> I'm a, you know, I talk like this to the parents and I think from the get go, they understand those core beliefs that we're trying to implement there. And I'm very positive. I'm very, you look at this, look at this. And we show demonstrations of the pink tower and everyone's welcome in to come and see. And it, it, it's lovely that hopefully we get that across to the parents from the get go and they understand those things. And, you know, that builds them on board to our core again. And it's, it's that whole, you know, middle ground of let's start here and everyone develops with us almost lovely thank you very much everybody for participating thank you molly for sharing your enthusiasm and your joy of being with the children with us um, next week we are going to work with the montessori europe community um, and we will be exploring how to entice parents to stay for the elementary as well as adolescent programs. So please feel free to join us on Wednesday. Um, it will be looking not at the earliest, but looking at the journey parents need to make to go from the nursery all the way up to the adolescent programs. Um, I hope you will be able to enjoy your the sunshine in the UK, it looks like it will be another lovely day tomorrow. And um, hopefully we'll see you next week or after half term when we will have a, a Nathan Archer reporting on the Leeds University research following on the presentation he has done in the past. Thank you everybody and thank you Molly. Thank you.